Welcome back. We are talking about the management of change. And in this session, we are going to talk about creating positive change. Because we need change to be positive. We need change to, to be healthy and feel good and be good. Although it can be a lot different, um, and with a lot of pain and a lot of heartache if we apply the right things if we do it right we 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 can be able to create positive change now if you just walk into a meeting into your church into your organization and say from this day on we are going to do this this way something and you totally change it you are going to get resistance your people are not going to like it um, you might have the authority to do it but you will not have the people with you in the change and that might lead to a place where the change will not work or where people do not take ownership of the change and you've got a struggle to get people into this change if you if you understand the processes and if you get to a place where you say okay i will apply this i will i will go through this way it might take longer to change things and to get change mm -hmm. in place but it will be more effective i understand in the context of leadership you might find yourself in situations where you need to make quick decisions where you have to make a decision and say this is what we're going to do this is how we're going to change it and you understand that this is this is important to do it immediately and now um, and we have to go forward uh, in in a manner that we haven't done before so there's change but not all change should be handled that way only 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 change that, that when there's a, a great need for immediate change you you can do that because of your authority maybe because of the goodwill that you have with the people that you are leading as a pastor or as a doesn't matter in your organization as a leader you you might have the goodwill of the people and they might say okay no this is fine you can get away with it up to a certain point but then then you've got to got to um, understand that sometimes when you do that and you and you continue to do that you are going to walk into into a face first into a wall and uh, people are going to say no we don't want this anymore we don't want to change anymore um, change because we have the authority to let people change and we use that authority that's that's always change that will come back to bite you but when people buy into it when people get to that place where they say okay yes i i i, I understand now why we need to change and I'm willing to do it and so on and then the, you, you will make change uh, a winner and you make change a thing that is not heartache and, and pain and everything that goes with that Howard Hendricks said if you want to become a change agent you also must change we've seen it in our first session when we talked about it that your heart needs to change now effecting change is difficult and we all understand the difficulty of it because we've we've tried and we've we've changed things and sometimes it worked and and, and works and but other times it did not work so we must understand that change is not easy and we've got to work with it to be a successful leader you you must have an attitude that makes you receptive to new ideas 
through your life. Uh, to be an effective leader, you, you need to be able to change. You and I need to be able to change. And we must be willing to look at new ideas, new ways of doing things, and then be willing to go through the process of change ourselves, even, even before we ask people to change. Now, the, the quality of your leadership will depend on your ability to evaluate new ideas, to look at them, evaluate, to distinguish between change just for the sake of change or change for the sake of the people, for, for the betterment of the church or the assembly. Now, sometimes, sometimes we just want to change because, you know, in the context of personality, some people... Um, need constant change. They need a constant um, uh, place of change. And other people need a, a constant place that stays the same. And we must understand that. So you might get, you might be a person that has the personality that is, is change is part of what what drives you and keeps you going, new things I want to do, new you, you, you all understand. If you've been doing the same thing for two, two years now, then you feel, you feel, ah, oh, no, this is, this has got to change. We, we've got to do something new. But then you get people who do things for 10 years exactly the same way and they feel, why do you want to change it? You know, this is good. This is, this is what I like. And we must understand people differ from each other. But as a leader, I must be able to look at new ideas, new ways of doing things, and be willing to change and do those things in a, in a new way. We must understand that effecting change is difficult, and, and, and there are two aspects necessary for change that a leader must understand. The first thing is, you and I need to know that technical aspects of change we must we must understand it what, what what's the technical things and we are going to, in this session we are going to talk about the technical things we've talked about the heart but we must also understand the attitude and the motivations needed to implement change not just in ourselves but but in the hearts and the minds of the people that we need of the organization that we want this change to happen in so we we've got to know and understand it now there's a factor the rc factor the resistance to change factor that is part of our lives and and you and i need to consider this factor now to understand resistance to change we must understand people now let's look at the graph this graph in that direction is time and most people find themselves somewhere on this line the first group that we find they are this group here and that consists only of 2.5% of people. They are the innovators, the people who, well, if you want to implement change, they're waiting for you to implement change. Or they are the people that are, that are coming to you and saying to you, Pastor, we, this needs to change. This, this, we need to do something. We need to do something um, uh, new. We've got to change the way we think and so on. So they, 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 that group. The next group that you find is the early adopters. And they are 13.5% of people in your church, in your assembly, in your group, in your school, wherever you are, you find yourself there. 13.5% of people are early adopters. So when you get to them and you talk to them about change, they, they will be willing to change because quickly rather quickly then you 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 find the early majority group they are here they are 44% of people they are the early majority and they are the people that 
that will change rather more quickly. The next group that you've got is here. They are the late majority. They are 34% here. And then you've got the, all the rest of the people at the back here. And that is 16% of people. They are what we call the laggards. So you've got the innovators, the innovators here. You've got the early adopters here. You've got the early majority here. And you've got the late majority here. And you've got the laggards here. The problem is, if, if in the context of your assembly, most of your leaders find themselves in, 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 in an area here yeah, and here, yeah, you've got problems. You, you, you've got problems to, to manage change. If, if the people with influence sit here in, this, in these areas, you, you always will have problems with change, to, to implement change. If your leaders and the people with influence find themselves in these areas, change is a lot easier. And we must understand, in the context of your assembly in your church, you are dealing with these groups of people in your church. All of them, you are dealing with them. They are there, and you've got to manage that. And that is important. So, resistance to changes. You've got a lot of people in your church. Uh, and, and it's difficult for them to change and it's difficult for the leader because you've got all the people against you that has fared well in the previous paradigm, the, 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 the existing paradigm. They fared well there, things are going well with them, they like it there, it's nice there. And you've got a few people that is for you and happy about the change because they might fare well in the in the new paradigm and if you and i do not understand that we've got a problem if we do not understand that they are always the people at the back the laggards and they will always be against any change they don't like change they like the status quo and they will stay there and they will they will give you a hard time they are the people that always ask you, why? Why do you want to change it? Why? We, we're doing well. It's good. I don't want to. The, you, they, they are those people. The, the, the other group, the late majority, they are these half-hearted supporters. They, they will come by some or other time. The early adopters make it easy and the, the early majority makes it easier for you and me. But I must understand if my leaders find themselves in the last, the last groups, I've got troubles. I, I've got trouble. And, and I will have to sit down with them and help them to go through this. Uh, if, if, if my leaders are in the, in the groups that change quickly and support change quickly, it is much easier to implement change. So, there is resistance to change when change is not self-initiated. In other words, people do not have ownership of change. When you and I, um, as a change agent, initiate change, it's, it's nothing, it's, well, we're positive about it. And we don't want to resist it. We want, we want this thing to, to move. We want this thing to go forward. But there's resistance to change when people do not own it. They feel, but this is just coming from the top down. You know, I just got to do it. And that's why I said earlier, if we use authority, you might have the authority to implement change. But if you use your authority uh, and people has not had the chance to take ownership of of change you will have problems you will have resistance to change um, there's resistance to change when routine is overthrown when things change force this there's new forces that's working and change forces us to think it changes habits uh, uh, change uh, forces us to reevaluate ourselves and our positions and who we are and what we are doing in a constant way 
And if we are in the in the the the, the, the late majority group, if I find myself there as a person, my sort of personality, or I find myself in the laggards group, I will resist this change because that is my that's who I am. So we must understand that routine is overthrown. There's resistance to change because there is fear of change. People don't always trust change. And especially when you are, if, if, you, if you've got this, the personality, the sort of personality that, that likes borders, that likes routine, uh, change brings insecurity. And, and you've got to you've got to sort of get out of your comfort zone and people don't like to get out of their comfort zones um, some people have been in their comfort zones for 20 years so change is very difficult for them there's resistance to change if if the purpose for the change is unclear and this is basically one of the most important points that I can make is People need to understand the purpose behind it and not just understand it. Not just say, yeah, I understand we need this, but buy into that purpose. That's, that's why in the first session we said change play, take place in our hearts as a leader, then in the hearts of the people. Then there's a purpose, a change of purpose, and people need to get a buy into that change. If they do not buy into that change, if they do not buy into the purpose, if they do not understand it, um, they they resist change. So you and I, as a leader, must communicate the purpose for change clearly, so that people can understand it clearly and know exactly why we are doing this. People resist change because it creates fear that you might fail. Um, if you've got to do things in a new way, if you've got a new position, uh, you've got a new um, way of thinking and doing, uh, the possibility is there to fail. If I've been doing something for, like this for the past 10 years and it was working, now suddenly I must do it like this. Now I might fail and people don't like to fail. So... If you want to implement change, help people to, to sort out that fear, to deal with that fear, but also help them to understand they have nothing to fear because they will be successful. And if, if there's a new way of doing things, if it's a new way of working, um, empower people to be able to do what they should do, how empower people to be successful. That will help you with that change process. There's resistance to change if, if the profit that you get out of the change doesn't justify the effort of the change. So if you've got this, a huge input okay, into change, but the profit that you get is very small. People say, no, that's not, that's not worth the change. So people must understand. And the problem that we have as leaders, as a visionary leader or a change agent, a person that says, okay, we, we, we've got to change our structures, we've got to change in our lives, and we've got to go to a specific place. The problem that we have as leaders is we see in our mind's eye, we see the future. We see where we are going to. So we must also help the people that need to change to see that future. A lot of the things that the profit that we can get out of this change is only in our sight, in our mind, in our way of thinking. It's not a reality. But the old way of doing things is a reality. I've been doing it this way. This is the results that I get from doing it this way. So this is my profit. I know this. But now there's a change. And, and they will resist it if they feel 
that it's not worth the effort and we must help people to do that there's resistance to change when people people are negative when there's when they think negative and in the, in the most most of the times when you start to implement change people start off negatively they have negative thoughts except if you have if you've if you've helped them to understand the purpose and they've got the dream in their hearts and they feel positive about this, if you if you get that that sort of feeling in their hearts of, of positivity, you won't have that resistance to change. People have resistance to change if they don't respect you as a leader. If if they do not do not have respect for you, then they will resist you. And you, uh, respect is something that we earn. That's why we say to leaders, pastors, um, when you are called to a church, don't walk into the church and tell them this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and we need to change this, we need to change this, and we're going to change this, and we're going to change this. And, and suddenly they feel like, okay, well, who are you? We don't trust you, we don't know you, we don't respect you. Uh, take your time to win the hearts and the minds of the people first and when you've got that when people understand we can trust you we respect you as a pastor as a leader and then you get to that place where you when you then implement change people say okay now this works start with the small things first Get some wins under your belt. Um, do, do small changes in such a way that you build a reputation of a person that when, when you change things, people say, now this will be better. Even if I don't understand it, even if I don't feel uh, positive about this, I understand the person who is implementing the change i trust the person who's implementing the change uh, and and when when you get to that place change becomes easier and easier and easier because people trust you there's resistance to change if you have you as a leader um, are influenced by criticism uh, if if we allow criticism to influence us you will never be a person that can implement change because all the people in the even the people that are in the early majority group even those people when 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 change starts they are negative about it they they feel uncomfortable about it and they they sort of they lean over to change but they are not there yet so all of those people plus that 34%, the 34% of the late majority, the 16% the, the of the laggards, all of those people, uh, they will criticize you for what you are going to do, what you're about you, and they're going to say, this is not going to work. And, and if you are sensitive, if you are influenced by that, you will stop. You will say, no, okay, then we won't carry on with this. We'll rather stop this. Um, you, you need to understand that. That's why change starts in your own in your own heart you must be certain about where you are going why you are going there what's the purpose of this is this in line with the purposes of the church of where we are going as an organization and and then from that from that point work forward because you will be criticized and also you as a leader work with the the possibility that this change will not get the results that you think it should get and then you, you will not just be criticized you will be crucified um, you must understand this and you must deal with this as a person uh, there's resistance to change if change means personal loss if somebody has a position of authority or whatever you've given of that person as in the church and change means that person loses that 
if that person is holding on to power and holding on, if that is a very important thing for that person and he loses it, they will resist it. They will say, no, I don't want part to be part of this because I am losing out. So it's a, it's a very difficult thing to balance change with people losing some of having some personal loss in this process. And if that person that, that's going to experience this personal loss is an influencer in your organization, an influencer in your church, then you've got troubles. Then you've got, there's a process that you've got to work with this individual to get him to that place where he would be positive about change. Now, there are three types of people in an organization when we look at resistance to change. Those who are going to lose when the change is implemented. Um, they who are neutral, they, they don't really care because it's not going to, to do something for them. They're not going to have a positive or a negative influence and those who will benefit from it. And we must understand if it's our leaders that's going to lose, then you are going to have trouble to implement this change. If it's um, if it's your leaders and your influencers who's going to benefit, they will again influence other people to be positive about it because they will be gaining something out of that. It will be to their benefit. So we must help the church, help your people, help them to understand what is the benefit of this change for themselves, their personal benefit. And if people, uh, if there's people that that will that's going to lose something that's going to experience personal loss. Uh, try to manage that in such a way that uh, they, will, they will be in a certain way compensated for this loss so that they don't experience it as such. There's resistance to change because change requires additional commitment from everybody. We've got to work harder, concentrate more, think more, do more, um, and, and people don't want to do that. Usually they don't want to give an additional commitment. Um, and that's what, what change is. That's what change brings, additional commitment. Up to the place where people are then okay with this change and, and everything is going on and you build up momentum and everything is working fine again. There's resistance to change because um, of small thinking or restrictive thinking um, and it makes people unwilling to accept new ideas. Some people just think small and they've got restrictive thinking, the way that they think, they restrict themselves and, and that is that is the leader's task, you and my, you, you, you and my task to help people out of this mindset out of this way of thinking to stretch them a little bit and give them something to 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 stretch for that is what we must do in the management of change there's resistance be to change because tradition resists change and if people are being caught up in their traditions and things they will always be changed and uh, as a leader uh, we must, uh, there's certain, certain, you must understand, certain traditions that are great and good and we hold on to and we hold them dear, but there are certain traditions that, that hamper growth and we've got to change them and we've got to teach people. Uh, there's no real place for tradition because tradition says we always stay the same and we do not always stay the same. There is change, it doesn't matter. Who we are, where we are, change is a fact of life. Somebody once said about negative thinking, don't look, you might see, don't listen, you might hear, don't think, you might learn, don't make a decision, you might be wrong, don't walk, you might stumble, don't run, you might fall, don't live, you might die, don't change, you might grow. If you look at the, the notes that I've given you, there's 
a, a questionnaire, a test list for change. If you if you think about implementing change, okay, you've you've had your your heart change and you've got, you've had your purpose change and you think about the, all the changes that needs to be set in motion and so on and you you want to ask yourself, okay, how do I, I evaluate this change process and where we are going to use this questionnaire just to help you with with the process of change. So um, use the questionnaire. Fill it in by yourselves, uh, tick off and, and look at it, answer the questions, and it will help you to make decisions. If um, if most of your answers are yes, then it suggests change will be easy. If, if it's maybe or no, then it suggests that change will be tough, and you know, there are certain things that you've got to put in place to help you with that. If we look at the, 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 the time question in change, the question of whether the time is right is the last and the most important question that you can ask in the context of change. You, you know we need change, you know it's got to change, something's got to change, but what, 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 what's happening with it? So if you make the wrong decision, so the change is wrong, and, and it is the wrong time that you implement it, uh, it will be a disaster. We, we, well, that's that's easy to understand. If it is the wrong decision, but it is done at the right time, people feel it is right, but it's just the wrong decision. It's the wrong change or the wrong way you're going. Then it is just an error. When people will look at you and say, "No, you've you've made an error. We can change this. It's okay." If if it's wrong time, wrong with other words, in, in the context of people, wrong time, uh, wrong decision, it's a disaster. People then they want to crucify you. But if it's just a wrong decision, right time, it's an error. If it's a right decision uh, and it's the wrong time, it will not be accepted. So people just say, "We don't accept this change." It, because the timing is not the right timing. And then if it's the right decision and it's the right time, you will have success. And that's what we aim for. That's what we aim for. So make sure that you have the right decision. This is the change that you want to implement. And make sure it is the right time. Then you will be successful. Otherwise, you will fail. It will be a disaster. And um, we'll get to that in one of the uh, later sessions or the points that I make is, is if you as a leader do not have enough goodwill, if you do not have enough change, making a wrong decision at the wrong time means that you use up all the change you have and then that is a disaster for you and for your ministry. Um, but if we if we do the right we make the right decisions this is the right change and it is the right time uh, when we do it at exactly the right correct time you will be successful so that's the things that you've got to sort out so people want to change they want to change if 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 they have if they have um, if they hurt enough to have change, if there's something that is pressing them, if, if things don't go well and they understand if we do not change now, we are going to have, this is going to be a, a problem, then they want to change because they hurt enough. People want to change because they know enough to want to change. They've got enough information. They want to change because they've received enough to be able to change. They, they've got enough information and they've got all the tools that they have to implement this change. Then they want to change. Um, somebody wants to say change is successful when we can look back and we can call it growth. Uh, that is the end of this first session um, on creating positive change and we will carry on with the second session after this break.